Hello everybody, it's the Lawn Gnome, and welcome to your December 2019 episode of 10 for 12. If you are new to my channel, of course, let me just say welcome, it's a pleasure to have you. And for all of you who have been following my 10 for 12s for the last couple of years, you all know what happens when the end of the year comes around and we do the final yearly 10 for 12. I like to capture the year that was in a bottle, and it was a very interesting year with lots of stuff to talk about, especially considering that it is also the final year of the 2010 decade. Lots of crazy things have happened in my life, as well as what's been happening all over the world that has affected me and also ignited my passions and hobbies. So I always like to give you guys my 10 events that shaped the year. And as always, I'm not venturing on this journey alone. I've got two very nice people in the YouTube community who are working with me on this specific venture, and that, of course, is Jay and Amy. Their channels will be in the box below, as well as their videos, so you can check out what they chose. Because I really like to make this as generic as possible. I, for one, like to talk about things in everything from current events to popular culture that shaped the year, but this is really something that you can do that fits you. It could be personal stories, it could be YouTube stories, everything that you feel is appropriate for what you consider to be the 10 events that shaped the year, that's what I always allow my collaborators to do. But I'm going to stick with my usual, and I have them all on a sticky note, I also like to give them all funny titles, to give you guys what I feel were the 10 events that shaped 2019, so let's begin. Number 10, I call, and I would probably say to most quite appropriately, Democrat Deathmatch. I mean, the election of 2020 is upon us, and my goodness, there is a war going on on the Democratic ballot. We have so many people that have thrown their hats in the ring for the sake of becoming president and, of course, beating Donald Trump. I honestly have no idea who is going to be the person that will be going up against Donald Trump for the presidency. It really still is anybody's game at this point, but from what I have seen... I really don't know what these people are planning to offer this country that is going to make it better. Now, don't get me wrong. Is the country in a better place right now? In some areas, yes, but in a lot of areas, no. But the areas that are more concerning to me are the ones that are doing very well. The economy. That's what I care about. I'm letting you all know that right now. It has nothing to do with whether I'm a Democrat or Republican, but as long as there's money in my pocket, food on my table, and my bills are getting paid, I just want to make sure that I can still do that because I have to take care of myself and my wife and future children, and I want a country that is allowing me to do that. And I don't know if the Democratic Party is going to give me a candidate that can do that. I'd like to see who ends up being the winner of this crazy clown show, if you will, because sometimes it feels that way, with all due respect, but let's see what happens. Number nine, I call Eye of the Tiger. This is something that I think some of us might have forgotten, but it was the fact that Tiger Woods finally got back to the top spot and won the Masters. We all know that Tiger Woods is without a doubt one of the greatest golfers in the history of the game, but in the end of last decade, he went into a downward spiral. He had some problems, but he came back modestly, humble, and he was really struggling in his craft. But somehow a miracle happened and the head garbage was removed and then he did did it. He gave us one of the greatest comeback stories in the history of sports, and I think even though he has not been the greatest of people in the past, I always say separate the art from the artist, and what he has done for the game has been great for the better, and I'm not even someone who watches golf, but I can't deny the fact that he is one of the most iconic figures in the sport, and he has proven that because of what happened in 2019 in his career. Number eight, I call Sanctuary, something that some of us might have even forgotten. Earlier this year, when the legendary Cathedral of Notre Dame was being renovated, it caught fire, and it was a very devastating fire that almost caused this iconic church to be burnt to cinders. But 
It was a miracle that they managed to salvage what they did because of the renovation. A lot of the pieces that were in there from archaeological digs and scrolls and scriptures, a lot of them were not even in that church because of all the renovations. And like the Twin Towers, when they were gone in September 11th, there was a statement that was made by all leaders. We will rebuild. They are going to rebuild this church, even though we mustn't forget that it was once a beautiful piece of architecture and it may not look as rustic and gothic as it used to because they're obviously going to have to renovate it now. It's great to know that the building is still standing and that they are going to manage to salvage a lot and very little was lost but even though it was lost it was still not a good thing but they're going to rebuild it and i'm glad that it's still here number seven is a pop culture event that i think a lot of us will never forget and i titled it one crazy weekend it happened in the end of may two iconic things in entertainment took place one was at the local theater and one was in the privacy of our own homes on TV. It was the fact that in the exact same weekend, we were all shook and brought on one crazy ride because we had the opening of Avengers Endgame, the final part of the Infinity Saga in a library of films that no one could have imagined would be as massive as it would be the MCU. But also in the very same weekend before we all went back to work, we had the Battle of Winterfell in the final season of Game of Thrones. One obviously was better than the other at the end of the day, but the fact that we were all anticipating these, these two earth-shattering events... We managed to survive both in the same weekend, and they will go down in legend. The fact that they actually crisscrossed in one period of three days was incredible. It was definitely a risk to be taken, but it was done, and we thank them for it. Number six is called Cows Are Good. One of the things that happened this year was we did have a brand new group of congressmen and women elected in, and one of them is someone who I have no respect for. If you do, that's fine. But she gave us a little something called the Green New Deal. Now, let me just say this right now. Am I someone that believes that climate change is a myth? No. Am I someone that wants to preserve and protect the environment for future generations? Of course I do. But one of the problems with the Green New Deal was there were a couple of things in there that definitely didn't sit well with the generic populace of the American people. And one of them was the fact that this was stating that we were going to have to stop eating meat. Now, let me say this. If you're a vegan, I respect you, as long as you respect the fact that I'm a carnivore, okay? I am someone who comes from a lineage of butchers. These are people that instilled my love of meat. My wife's basic food groups, one of them happens to be steak. We are both meat eaters, but we also understand the fact that there are people that believe that eating animals is not a good thing. But... There are a lot of reasons why I think it's okay, and I feel that we all need to respect each other regardless of what our lifestyles are. But the fact that they want to put into law that there are certain things that you can and cannot put in your mouth. Now, I will be hypocritical here when I say that because of my religion there are certain foods that I don't eat. But even though they are in religious scriptures, I still have the choice as to whether I want to eat them or not. And that's the problem. Something like the Green New Deal was removing the concept of choice. When you remove choice, this is no longer a democracy. It's no longer a republic. That is fascism. That is intolerance. That is monarchy. No, that is not right. If you want to make a better Green New Deal, I'd like to see what it will be, but you have to understand that stripping people's basic freedoms is not going to fly in Congress. And the fact that even her own party was not entirely on board with this because they believe that it would throw them out of office 
If they said yes, says a lot. Number five is Hollywood versus the real world. Hollywood definitely showed its true colors this year. Two of the events that were part of that that pretty much defined it were what happened with Felicity Huffman and Lori Loughlin and what happened with Jussie Smollett. Just because of the fact that you have more power because you are a famous face or because you have more money than other people, you are not above the law. And yes, I will say, even though I respect the agenda, I will say that to Donald Trump as well, there are a lot of injustices in this world, and what we saw with the college scandal was one of them. The fact that Felicity Huffman did at least admit that she did what she did, which is why she didn't get the prison time that we all wanted her to get, was admirable. But Lori Loughlin's in deep trouble. And it's so upsetting because of the legacy that she left in popular culture thanks to Full House. It's disgusting, and nobody should be allowed to bribe or allow people to boost test scores for their kids just because of the fact that they have the money to do so. And also, just because you have money does not mean that you can use identity politics for the sake of being a victim. Jussie Smollett did a bad thing for the black community, for the LGBTQ community, a very bad thing. And the fact that he was caught red-handed says a great deal about what he did. Even when Dave Chappelle is making fun of you, says a lot about your character. As Martin Luther King once said, we will judge you by the content of your character, not by the color of your skin. And in these two specific cases, when it comes to elitists in Hollywood, that is proven most definitely. Number four is Sweet Virginia. Probably something that a lot of people on the left wants to sweep under the rug, but it was the fact that some of their politicians were caught using blackface and also being caught for sexual abuse, and nothing was done. They were not thrown out of office. There was not a big stink. It was political stuff that really took its toll on this whole thing, and it really shows the double standard when it comes to Republicans and Democrats and right and left. And I think that that's wrong. I feel that when you've made a mistake, you should own it. At the same time, if it was something that you did in your past, like maybe when you were a kid or a teenager, and it's like 30 years down the line and you didn't do anything like that since, then yes, I feel that you have the ability to let it slide. But if you are caught, do not deny it. Because the thing when it came to these specific politicians was there was extremely visible evidence of these issues. And the fact that nothing was done to them was really, really sad. Because I have to do this. If they were Republicans, it would have been a shit show. Obviously, it just shows that we cannot have double standards. We can't. We cannot. These types of things are wrong and they should be owned. End of story. Number three, I call Prime Time LIC. LIC stands for Long Island City. And that was where a new quarters of Amazon was going to be. But a certain politician gathered the troops and said, no, we don't want this here. We don't want big corporations bring apart the demographics of our community. It was such a big mistake. The small businesses were absolutely sure that Amazon having their headquarters in this area of Queens would have boosted their businesses and changed the demographics of the area for the better, not for the worst. And of course, identity politics was thrown into that as well because they said, sure, it will benefit the white people, but it won't benefit the minorities is not necessarily true. There was no doubt in my mind that all different kinds of people would have gotten jobs from this. That's what it's all about. Jobs and making money. This was an opportunity for so many people who were looking for work, people who were trying to do better at their businesses. It was an opportunity for them to really get higher up in society and the politicians of the area shot it down. 
absolutely disgusting. And it's also the reason why those specific politicians' polling numbers are extremely low. It says a lot about your character. Number two, I call... Oh boy. Here we go. Trigger warning, Trump. Love him or hate him, it's very hard to avoid a year with him as president and not talk about him. I said before, many times, if you haven't been listening, let me say it again for you people in the back. I didn't vote for him. I didn't trust him. Do I still trust him now? Oh, dear God, no, I do not. But am I happy with what has happened in the last three years with him as president? The answer is yes and no. Socially, this country is a hot dumpster fire, and it's only getting bigger and hotter. It's terrible. But from an economic standpoint, I'm very, very happy. In the last three years, I have seen a cost of living expense increase in my paycheck. I have seen my cost of health care go down, my cost for prescription drugs go down, and I have received a raise. So, as far as I'm concerned, that's not a bad thing. And on top of that, I have a lot of money invested in the stock market for the short and the long term, and the numbers are landmark highs. The fact that I went from being someone who rented in a small one-bedroom apartment with my wife, and I'm now a homeowner because mortgage rates were extremely low, I managed to capitalize and get a great house. Ever since Trump became president, I have seen a better life for myself. Does that mean that everybody is having a better life right now? The answer is no. Do I understand the reasons why? Well, the answer is no, because I don't know everybody in this world that's dissatisfied. But if there are people that I personally know are not happy with the presidency and what's been going on in the country for the last three years, of course I'm eager to listen. And I always like to talk about these things. But one of the things that we have to do is we have to be respectful and we have to agree to disagree. That's the way that we have to do this right now. And I don't know what next year is going to bring, especially considering the fact that we're not going to see a news day without talking about President Trump. Because right now, there are articles of impeachment that might in fact get passed right now by the Judiciary Committee of the House of Representatives. It's just been an extremely hot dumpster fire. That's what Trump has been, pretty much. And there are a lot of people besides him that have caused this. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, everybody, but it ain't just him. And that leads me to the number one event that shaped 2019, and that is The Greatest Generation. One of the things that made me so proud to be an American is the fact that this year we celebrated a landmark anniversary of the victory of World War II. We also commemorated a sad point in our history of that exact same time frame, the bombing of Pearl Harbor. But the fact that those brave men and those brave women who stayed home and took those jobs that the men couldn't hold on to because they were in wartime, we came together as a nation and everybody from home and abroad, to me, from this country, they're all heroes. And the fact that we are about to be living in a world where those who fought that war and were victorious from our country will not be in this physical plane anymore is going to be a really sad thing to see because there's nobody from World War I that has fought in World War I from America that's alive anymore. My two grandfathers fought in World War II. My grandfathers even stormed the beaches of Normandy on D-Day. And they're not here anymore to be embraced by this country as true heroes. They both came back as heroes. And they always have been heroes, even if it's not just about them fighting in World War II. But that was the greatest generation. People who threw their lives on the line to protect their families, protect our country, and protect freedom. And we owe them everything, guys. We really do. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Those are the 10 events that shaped 2019 for me. And I'm really looking forward to see what Jay and Amy have chosen. And looking forward to 2020 for another great series of 10 for 12 videos. Because it's definitely going to be a very interesting series of videos. Because 
this is going to be the last time that I do a 10 for 12 as a collaboration. Next year, I'm going to be doing my 10 for 12s in 2020 solo because there's going to be some very special topics that will be getting covered, which is pretty much why I tried to make sure that a whole bunch of specific topics were officially ended, specifically the Disney stuff. Just wanted to make sure that those were all officially in the books before I officially made the change. So to all of you that has collaborated with me on 10 for 12s, and it all started with Christine from Teen of Little Hollow, I thank you all. It has been such an amazing gift to work with each and every one of you, and just seeing all of these finished products has just been near and dear to my heart. So, Happy New Year, guys. I'll see you in 2020. Hey, thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. If you're new here and want to see more of what my channel has to offer, please click on the link to my last video or hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of my uploads. Content of all sorts is posted here quite often, so trust me, you do not want to fall behind. I will see you in the comments, and actions speak louder than words.